Alrighty. Uh, I think I'm going to take a break from Freaked and try to close out work on this Circle K stuff. Um, so Iron Eagle is, I think, some kind of Top Gun derivative. I don't know if it's a knockoff or just happened to be made around the same time, maybe. Actually, I'm not even sure if it came before or after Top Gun. We should just look all this up. Um, but like Top Gun, and I think maybe even more specifically than Top Gun, this film is about, you know, the whole U.S.-Libya thing that pretty much got started right away with Reagan's um, presidency. So maybe we should read a little bit about that as well. Let's see here. Uh, okay, it's a Canadian-American production. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, there are many sequels, so a lot to dig into here potentially. Right, the basis of the fictional story in the film relates to real-life attacks by United States against Libya over the Gulf, Gulf of Sidra in particular the 1981 Gulf of Sidra incident. Am I saying that correctly? I'm not sure. So, okay, let's read a little bit about this event. Um, some situations stretching back to the 70s. You know, I knew about this sort of this ongoing situation with Libya in the 80s. I don't know that I know much about this particular incident, so I guess we'll learn a little bit about it, <laughs> maybe in some weird fantasized kind of sort of way through this movie. Um, here's a bunch of plot. Sometimes it can be helpful to just read through the plot so we don't have to worry about it too much and can focus more on the sync material, but I don't know. At this point, I'm actually just kind of in a mood to just jump into the movie and see what we can see here. <clears throat> if it's fruitful, maybe we can do heavier research into that stuff later. Just let it roll by real slow, see what we see for now. So perhaps that incident, I mean, I suppose it does explain why the Bobs reach for Libya when they make the decision to have terrorists appear at the Twin Pines Mall. I suppose it goes without saying, but I, I do want to point out, you know, that although that explains why we get Libya specifically, it in no way explains what they're doing in that story still. <laughs> what the meaning of any of that is in relation to the other themes we see in the film and so on. So, even though we can pinpoint a likely sort of source of that material in the, um, you know, local anxieties of the time period there, maybe about Libya, um, that doesn't tell us very much about <laughs> why it's there in the first place and what the what the meaning is globally. Does that all make sense? I feel like I'm not managing English fantastically at the moment. So, sorry, I'm just gonna. Oops. We saw this thing here that said system, systems, systems check. Very interesting. Looking at this little screen. You know, you just never know. Um, I would like to run that. Systems check, okay. Two or two is a slightly funny number, you know, but doesn't seem like there's anything there. When do we get a priority check? None. 
sure what that means. Uh, and then we see two planes right away. You see two planes on the cover image as well, you know? I guess really there's you know, there's another little plane here and this here, but but those are quite emphasized there. Okay, who's this, I wonder? Is this a main character? Oh, also, um, apologies for this weird watermark up here. It's surprisingly difficult to find a good copy of this film. <coughs> the one that I had originally was it was actually a 4.3. It was really a pretty bad copy. Cropped out a ton of material. This one at least is the correct aspect ratio. It looks like it's pretty okay quality for what it is. Um, but I have this water, weird watermark. I guess this film is just not very widely known, maybe? Or it's not thought very... Highly of, perhaps, I don't know. It does seem relatively obscure. Okay, um... Well... That seemed like something very, very funny happened. <laughs> Catch that. There's our pilot. Interesting 327 here. It's strange this 327, 237 stuff. First of all, it's just strange how 237 relates to, you know, the fine structure constant. It's kind of like... <laughs> you know what I mean? It's strange. If you take the two and make that a Roman numeral two, and then break that apart, you get that, sort of. But then also, how this seems to sort of spell sex, in terms of outline substitution, I talk about that in um, my Initiation Redux video, uh, where I make the argument that Kubrick is using, at least among, you know, maybe amongst other things, using 237 as a, as a sort of subliminal um, resonator for this word, gosh, I'm failing at talking. Uh, two planes, two planes, two planes. Have we seen the other pilot, or just that that one? Got a lot of alphanumerics there. Sydney J. Fury. I don't know anything about this person. Well, the first thing I notice is that we're just seeing a lot of people interacting with screens <laughs> so far, kind of reading little messages coming through little screens. And we've seen this big visual motif of the two planes. And now we have, you know, detection of a radar threat. 
Um, this is happening on that side. Interesting text here. I wonder if it calculates to anything. I'm not going to bother to do that at the moment. So it's on that side. I know we're just in an extended kind of air sequence here so far, but so far I'm not being like amazed by what we're seeing here. Certainly compared to um, Down and Out in Beverly Hills, which was just loaded instantly with bizarre stuff. This is a little less, you know, it, it, it is, however, in, it is, however, quite dimensional in the context of this stack, right? By which I mean, you know, as one of many films that were quoted in that weird Charlie Chaplin Circle K quick flicks, whatever it was called, ad. We had the other films, and now, well, here's a film that just has a bunch of exploding planes in it. So it, in context, it's, it's quite interesting. Okay, I guess maybe we just do just cut into that. Wow. <clears throat> we'll get some kind of nice 80s music playing now. Was that his father, maybe? Sunglasses, keys, Lufthansa mug, maybe? Planes. What's he working on? Box cassette.
Well, so the red does seem to be clustered up over here. Eagles flying something. So, you know, that's like the plane, maybe. Explosion. It's a funny element there. And indeed, we have many sort of antenna resonating things over here, including many trophies, which are just, you know, vertical metallic elements like that. This thing I find very North Towery. You know, it's basically um, diagonal. Of course, we have more plain things. I wonder what that is. Is that an LP maybe or? Not sure. This I always find interesting um, because. Another name for a football is a pigskin. Burning flesh. Almost half a match there. That one, you know, there isn't much. Well, there's a little bit of image structure there because it is there is yellow, and it is maybe a kid, so there's a little atomic kitty. So. Uh, I think it's not unreasonable to call that a match there. So a little fractal even. Um, and do we have just the two red books? Maybe there's some red stuff there, I'm not sure, but that makes it feel a little signed even. Especially because I want to read those two together as well as circular objects. Which then also sort of directly relates birds to planes. Yeah, I guess those must be records, because those definitely are. <laughs> Warning here. So we know we're on an Air Force base, I guess. Yeah. Bicycles are interesting, you know, they, they have metal handles and a lot of metal spokes and the wheels and so on. So it's all um, antenna resonant. Um, I've seen bicycles used in North Tower resonant ways in Freaked as well. So we'll, we'll see that. Um, in fact, I think the introduction of I and I, the Rastafari, um, involves a bicycle. What? Is that maybe from that album even? 
I'm not sure. I wonder if we can figure out what era of the police this sticker belongs to. But I don't know. I see that. I think about that album, that Synchronicity album. Um, for those who don't know, the police released an album called Synchronicity that had a song, I think, also called Synchronicity. There it is appearing with red and yellow hand <laughs> on the... left-hand side of the image, which also has lots of little pictures. It also has the exposed skin. And here's like two red streaks and some other red thing and more red things. He's holding the cassette recorder, which is silver metal and a communication device. Textury, matchy sort of tower thing here. Interesting element, interesting elements. Warning. <laughs> I find that pretty strange here. Does that say, kissed her on the lips, maybe? So yeah, all the arrows on this side, also with all the images. And then kind of multiple, there's a big sign with a lot of text. The pig skin seems out of place. That ought to be over here with the rest of the fiery flesh resonating things. Little vehicle, it's like a little car there. <clears throat> this is really, um, I've seen this before. Um, the police and, and, and that specific synchronicity album appear in Critters in the context of a quite impressive stack, I'd say. I really am looking forward to getting to Critters. Um, I do feel a little bit of an obligation now to kind of keep moving forward with Freaked, um, just, you know, an obligation to myself because I've opened, opened up that line here and I want to sort of, you know, do it justice and and also just get all my thoughts about Freaked recorded so that I can let go of it a little bit, you know. Um, but I also want to be able to keep jumping around. So maybe we'll interleave it with some critters and stuff. I don't know. Anyway, uh, some kind of Judas Priest thing here. I'm not sure exactly what, but this has the look of some kind of a flying creature, maybe a robot unicorn thing or a dragon, or I don't know what. <laughs> Someone who knows more about Judas Priest can maybe identify that. Multiple hats here. Okay, I think we were done looking at this picture. Um, very interesting picture, particularly, maybe I already said, but so soon after the last impressive picture. <laughs> Man, I think that really is that Synchronicity album, actually. Hold on, because... Yes, because there's that little logo, I think. It's, um... Yeah, that looks like it, right? Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's exactly it. <sighs> Truly bizarre. <laughs>
Because the next thing they released, so it came in 83. And in 86, they put out the singles thing. And then that was the next one's greatest hits. So, yeah, this was really, this was like the last big police album. And it was also the, you know, the one that would have been just contemporary with when the film was made. So that's just how it works out. But wow, there it is with all this fucking nuts content over there. Uh, there's some you know, like interesting elements here and stuff. I'm not sure if I'm perceiving them coming together in a, in a meaningful way. It's like a clock tower there, sort of. And then, then what's... Uh, yeah. I'm not sure what this is a picture of. It's this image again. Which we thought was a match. Twins. So are we are we to assume on the basis of this picture that that character is a redhead? Interesting. What a fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm amused. Okay, and then we just cut right into Libya, I suppose. You are a 
allowed violate your territorial airspace. At no time did we engage in any type of intelligence gathering operation. And it is. These roses are really sticking around here. Okay, I guess there's a bunch of training. He meets his mentor, it looks like, maybe. I guess we're sort of periodically cutting to this other subplot. In the Middle East. A bunch of stuff happens with some computer hacking, maybe. <laughs> Two really big red rectangles in this scene. Wow. Those are quite a striking element there. And weird. What's going on in that room, do we think? Strange. Yeah, wow. It really does hew to the left of the communication tower there. And, you know, to the left of the scene globally. I do think we had maybe two red barrels there. I'm not sure what the color is in that third one. But definitely a sense of sort of two little pyramidal tent things as well. Gosh. Yeah. Hmm. Amazing how much that really looks like a crucifix. Wow, we see this tower collapse. And, I mean, look at that. That's... I'd say that's very, very strongly signed, you know? I mean, especially in, in context, of course. Uh, yeah, because they're really tipped. You know, it's like red on the, on the top. That's very strong, I'd say. <sighs> this tower collapsing. I guess maybe there are three barrels there in this first shot.
Iron Eagle. I am the flight leader of an American sub force. Wow. Really quite interesting because we have these two spokes here. Yeah. Here we're just looking at it again through binoculars now. I find just this thing filmed from this angle to be matchy. So yeah, that's like a red tower. There's the communication tower, it's like slightly taller, so. Yeah, it's way too much. It's way too much. All the emphasis always on this side. Well, okay, that's about as far into that film as I think I want to go tonight. Um, yeah, in the end, quite a lot of very interesting material in there. Um, I would say, in terms of my, like... <laughs> sort of stupid arbitrary judgments about this, um, uh, binary, arbitrary binary judgments, let's say, um, I would count this film as part of the constellation. I think there are enough image matches in here. That tableau with the synchronicity, um, police synchronicity sticker, and the actual hand on the red and yellow sticker, you know, around this area where we also see this little girl in the pink dress reflected twice in the mirror this i think red-headed child with the phone antenna correctly handed relative to his hair and how that material falls right before that in the bedroom on the way out right in this area yeah it's clustered in on the timeline, um, there are fractal elements in some of those matches, very st strange stuff there, signed stuff, and then in the action sequences, what seems to me to be a pretty persistent preference for explosions to cluster on the left-hand side of the screen, uh, and in many precise configurations with um, you know, communication towers on the right-hand side towers that we then see collapse 
So, wow, quite an amazing thing to be quoted at the Circle K. <laughs> okay, uh, it's 10. I think I do want to look at the next film, Circle K, but I'm going to take a break. So back in a second. You know, it's a good thing that I'm pretty exhausted today because I forced myself to go out and get some exercise. Um, because if I wasn't so exhausted, I would just be losing my mind at this, probably. The Circle K is truly a central, central node in the constellation. This is unbelievable the way these films get quoted in that whole structure. Um, so I want to just take a second to really marvel at the... <laughs> uh, we're not even going to marvel at the... I can't, I can't even keep this one together in my head, guys. It's too dense. But so let's just focus on this one aspect. This film, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, contains in it this image, which we've already analyzed, right? This has many fractal placements of the, of the match. And, and it's, it's one that contains this perfect red right hand. This is right on. <laughs> and so then this film, Remember, Edna, can, can we spawn, um, uh, open a new window? Looks okay. I just want to get that perfect frame here, you know, where Keanu's head is just fanned out between there. It's just right there. Perfect. So, okay, we have all that up now. So, <laughs> so, this image that does all that and then also directs us to King Kong which contains all those matches that we looked at also then contains this image that contains all these fractalized matches and has this whole business with the red head that shows up then this contains you know in its rectangle here 119 and the two red strawberries and all of that and the way that it itself, God, this is so nuts. The way that it itself constitutes a match. That image contains this image, <laughs> which is a match, which then contains, uh, you know, inside of it, because it's also a film, this image. It's just led us around in this impossible circle that culminates in the same picture. I mean... <sighs> That alone, that just that part, you know, not even thinking about all of these other movies and all the weird fucking stuff that we've looked at there. We haven't looked yet at Out of Africa and Gung Ho. <sighs> well, okay, so then here's the last thing I want to I want to pull in because this here, the fact that this is signed with the, the police synchronicity thing ties it in so strongly to Critters. It would be wrong not to just immediately look at that here, but um, I want to look at, I want to lead into it slightly by looking first at the Critters poster to illustrate that it, again, has many matchy characteristics. Um, I mean, the obvious place to start, of course, is with the mouth. It's just, uh, I'm not sure what exactly it is about it. You know, it's because, you know, I, I see lots of 
weird mouths in movie art, but this one, oh, this is not, this is behaving very oddly. Back to normal here? Okay, <laughs> who knows? Um, I suppose it has something. It has something to do with the with the il exaggerated size of it, how elongated it is, and then the particularly like gnarly teeth, you know. But it just really, really looks like that to me. Um. Well, and then we have these two antenna like silver streaks, comet things. I think that tracks that. An interesting aspect of this image is that if you take the middle, you'll see that the critter isn't really centered in the image. He kind of falls on this side. They've actually aligned him not with the center of the frame, but they've aligned him with these double red T's. So that becomes like the real image center. It's very, very weird that, <laughs> because it really emphasizes that. Well, so I had made a bet. Um, and actually, this is documented in, a, in my Facebook chat log with Alan. I was like, hey, look at this weird movie that's like a knockoff of Gremlins. Look at this poster. Look how it has this up here. And <laughs> that looks like a barn. Maybe it's a red barn. And that's like a windmill thing. So that's kind of like a little match. And I don't know if I noticed that exactly. I don't remember exactly. But I, I was just noting these kinds of things. I'm like, look at this mouth. It looks like the tower wound. And look at these double red T's and how it's centered there. I for sure remember I caught that. Um, and just the general sense of like const star constellations, like it's kind of signed, like I just was sure, I felt for sure it was going to contain handed matches and wow, does it like it really does. And look at the way that it does in just this particular one, you know, here's just one of many, but this one is really spectacular. I mean, let's just let's just perform a very quick analysis just on this image. And I'm not going to say anything about what Critters is about or any of the narrative elements of this stuff. We'll, we'll look at that when we look at this movie in depth. But... Antenna resonating toothpick. Blue and red banded pattern food so you know it's stuff that's been in a fire like cooked stuff you know yellow red white these are all atomic kid colors and of course here we have the red-headed child in like a red strawberry t-shirt with this American flag, which is very red and white dominant with Bruce Springsteen's red guitar, <laughs> which itself is a bit of a, of a handed match because here's all the, all the strings, you know, it's, it's, um, long metal. So that's antenna resonant there. So, um, mapping out the structure here a little bit. I would say that's a plane. North Tower, South Tower. Um, I would say that this is a plane. North Tower, South Tower. I would say that this constitutes a plane. Um, like that here, I'll start indicating the 
match sections here. Like this. Um, right, and then in this plane, uh, plane it's the sense. Match like that. Uh, and then, of course, we have planes. Uh, oops. We have actual pictures of <laughs> literal planes on the wall with explosions. Uh, a map of the United States. And this synchronicity thing here. And look how that connects there. It's so strange. It's like it's like it's like they're calling attention to, to that. <laughs> There's a little link to it from the figure. You know, a character is looking at this. But if you look at that, then you might notice its connection to this and then you might wonder about <laughs> how any of this can be happening. Um, okay. So, but then just look how it f perfectly integrates with these other images here. I'm, we're gonna get rid of the circle K for now and get rid of all the posters. Just these pictures. Look at how similar they, I mean, just look how weird, weird, weird these, how these images connect. And how perfectly they conform to this, to the structure we've been exploring, right? I mean, this is like some kind of insane lottery jackpot moment of impossible correspondence, which is kind of what the Circle K sets us up to ex expect, you know, with all this stuff about the fortune wheel and chance. Um, uh, and then this happens. I just... Okay. Um, I'm like a little dazed by it, you know what I mean? It's just fucking impossible that these pictures exist. Uh, it's, to me, this is, uh, these ones in particular, you know, because they, it's like they're talking about themselves. They tell you it's about synchronicity with this weird police poster. And then they show you the stamp of a hand in the correct part of the frame. <laughs> and one even says right on, like, good job. You've noticed, you've noticed it. You've noticed the, the key. And then, and then it directs you to this map, this map of other media objects that then contain precise holographic replacements of the same reference object again. It's always relating back to this picture. <laughs> this one in particular It's not just Eros and Logos. It is that. It is that pattern. And that is an archetypal pattern that I think just manifests in images. I think you see a lot of fiery red stuff on the right and cool blue stuff, or excuse me, on the, on the left, and cool blue stuff on the right. I think that's, that probably is a predisposition that human beings have in putting pictures together. Although you see, it's not like it's universally observed. Like this has more red stuff on the right. Because I'm not even sure of, about that. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised to see something like that because I, I do think that Logos and Eros are obviously like fundamental archetypal 
ideas, that kind of map onto it, onto this picture. And it is a fascinating mystery that 9-11 should kind of match this basic archetypal duality, or the, or the image of it rather should match that, because it's not supposedly anyway, a composed image, yet it possesses this very artistic sort of quality, which is that it symbolizes this relationship between two fundamental aspects of our nature. Um, I'm going to cut this rant off, I think. Um, because like, I, I, you know, I am just tired and I, I don't really want to like whip myself into too much of a frenzy. But man, it's really, really hard not to just keep ogling here. Um, what do you think, you know, like, what is it going to take for like an average sort of person to look at this series of images and things that happen here and understand this sort of thing and get that this is so weird and impossible. <laughs> what is it exactly that's preventing it? Is it a, is it just, a, I don't think it's just a matter of exposure. You know, I, I think that that, that idea was kind of eliminated by Joe's film, you know, because that got exposure, but it, most people didn't relate to it with the depth that one might have hoped, you know. I do think there's probably just a resistance. There's a resistance to, well, it's not probably, I feel this resistance in myself and express it constantly. Like, your rational left hemispheric egoic self has a lot of resistance to things like this because they, they imply something so beyond you. I mean, what's happening here, folks? <laughs> For me, there is any kind of explanation that begins with, oh, it's some kind of chance accident that you're making into nothing. Like, it's just a non-starter because I can't, like, I'm just looking at these pictures. They're, it's too weird the way they connect. I'm sorry, but, like, the image just speaks volumes. It, 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 it can't be undone with language like that. I can't stop thinking about how these pictures are the same pictures, you know? It's just a property of these images that I have to somehow live with. <laughs> so I need some kind of uh, explanation, like, of some sort. Um, I mean, ultimately, my explanation is, is um, that there isn't an explanation. There's a huge mystery. Um, but I think we can say some things about the mystery, you know, and I think it's about consciousness and human identity. We are something rather more than we think we are, <laughs> or we're connected to something more. Because this is a knock on the from the other side of the screen, you know. Uh, the problem is is that people don't know how to read the message. It's like Manly P. Hall says, right? I, I don't remember the exact quote, but it's like when the language of symbolism is understood, a great veil will be dropped from the eyes of humanity or something. I don't remember. I'm sure I butchered that, but that's, that, that's the gist of it. And wow, it's so true because when we understand how to read symbolism, 
we will, I think, quite quickly see this pattern because it's <laughs> it's so clear and persistent. And I put something together, I think. I think for me, this is kind of maybe approaching like my last word about this whole issue, at least sort of internally to myself. Um, you know, I think that these films represent or sort of are, they simply are, these films are shared dreams. Shared. We all had the dream of Bill and Ted together. Some <laughs> particular people had the dream of Iron Eagle together. I didn't. Um, but it doesn't matter. These are these are dreams, sort of media dreams, art dreams that are floating around in the the collective. What I'm doing is analyzing shared collective dreams and trying to show, um, well, so actually <laughs> that implies that I went into it with some kind of a plan. I didn't. I was just following my nose, poking around weird patterns and weird numbers and so on, and found this incredible structure that so many of us have found. Um, because it's like that stuff is an entry into the un this weird unconscious area and this 9-11 synchronicity, it's it's still right at the surface. Like it 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 seems to have imprinted that understructure so strongly that at least in media sort of plus minus 30, 40 years or something from the present, it seems I mean I'm extrapolating to the future a bit there, but it seems like this pattern is really, really active. I said I was going to cut the rant short, right? <laughs> it's just like launched into the rant. Um, but because I'm analyzing collective or collective dreams, yeah, this is a this is objective material. <laughs> These are just object. I think objective patterns that we can observe in our collective dreams. And it looks to me like, yeah, we had some really, really strange precognitive dreams with really, really precise information that approaches a level of, of uh, communication that is just, you, you can't reduce it to some weird natural process. This is someone saying hello, right on with a red hand, like this synchronicity poster, like <laughs> it's like, it's also, isn't it so creative? Look how creative, how funny it is. It's like, I feel like we're having, it's like a peek into Yeah, giggles in the divine mind, you know. <laughs> the police and, and this pattern, like, oh, don't know if I should laugh or cry at stuff this strange and this beautiful, and just this um, resonant, this harmonic, you know. What an, what an abundance of, of material we have here. This this special K situation, man, is a situation. Uh, Hellraiser is incredible. Freaked is incredible. We're just getting started with that. The way it, Mac and me relates to it, it's all this stuff is amazing. But this is, I keep coming back to this and remembering like, wow, so many things happen here. And it is like so fractalized and just nutsed out okay i said we were going to look at another film i just i don't have it in me this is this is too much we, we're just like break it up into like further small segments uh next time we'll i guess maybe we'll look at gung ho i'm, I'm pretty curious about that one um out of africa I, I mentioned i think at some point that 
I did some Wikipedia research on this, and there are some really, really strange, strange synchronicities to do with this one. So I'm looking forward to that one very much as well. Well, I don't know, you know, we'll get to all this stuff. Uh, this was, in the end, a very exciting tour through Iron Eagle. I, I wonder what maybe might be happening in the sequels. Um, Obviously, at some point, also, all these films deserve a much deeper, you know, correct watch where we pay attention to the story and the dialogue. And, um, you know, I feel like what's going on here is so amazing that we, we ought to at least attempt to um, follow through on what the paraclete seems to be indicating and do a, a connected read uh, as as kind of <laughs> hi-fi a read as we can of of, uh, of this material. That's going to be a challenge, man. I, I find it very, very difficult, you know, to keep my models of these films like resed up in my head at the, at the level of fidelity that's necessary to do this kind of calculus. Um, so you've got to have little maps of all these scenes and all the object placements and stuff to 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 grok to like the way that these weird image things overlap uh and then also like just the timeline structures you know where things are clustering like that like all that stuff is necessary and then also you're trying maybe we're trying to relate these narratively and relate the characters and you know it's wow that's like a lot i i've the most i think i can kind of keep in my head is like three films like a, like a, like a like a three three-way analysis is uh enough like that's tricky trying to squeeze five in here anyway i think i think we are probably going to discover some amazing things there um but we will discover those things not tonight uh but in the future Tonight, I'm going to actually unwind. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out. And uh, catch you next time. Bye.